everyone is looking for love. And they're desperate to find it. We must show them love. We must introduce them to love, to Jesus. To Jesus. For this is true revival. Love is all they need. Everlasting love. Rise up and go and show them love, revival love, supernatural love. Jesus is love. love. One of my favorite sessions at Women on the Front Lines in LA at our World Convention was the Mothers of Revival. It was a panel discussion. And uh, Benny Johnson, the wife of Bill Johnson, as well as Sue Ahn, the wife of Che Ahn, and Mary Audrey Raycroft from the Toronto Airport uh, revival or the renewal out of the 1990s, they're all involved in renewals, every single one of them. And so when I went up to, to get them settled on the seats and to introduce them, all of a sudden, the power of God came. Sue on started praying for me, and then Benny got her hands on me. Mary Audrey got her hands on me, and I got so blasted in the Holy Spirit, so what we would call maybe drunk in the Holy Spirit, filled with him to a point where I couldn't stop laughing. I was rolling on the floor. I mean, I was having the time of my life. And for that whole session and beyond, I was inside of this realm, and I very seldom experienced those things, so it was kind of funny, especially in public, having that happen. But these Mothers of Revival and that panel, led by Dr. James Gall, who is the founder of Women on the Front Lines, um, was just a fantastic panel. And there was so much insight and fun and, and wisdom given, and so I want you to enjoy it. I'll be back after this. Let me just kind of summarize this. Obviously, three different regions of the earth, three different or you know geographical areas, three different spheres that are all apart, interrelated in, in this uh, revival alliance and things of this nature. And so we have Mary Audrey here wanting to give a statement of value, of honor, to those who might not ever have what we call a platform as far as a stage. But we all have the stage called the world. And so whether you're a cook, a dishwasher, whether you work at McDonald's, or whether you're a high-end whatever, you have value. And Mary Audrey was speaking in not only this, but an area of honor, honor, and encouraging each of you that you have a heart and you have a voice that needs to be heard. I've been following at a distance Dear Benny's journey. I think it is one of, going to become one of the strong testimonies of the medicine that is needed so that we cannot have short time mindsets but long-term mindsets that builds unto the lineage and the legacy. And there she's dealing with, specifically with health, but the health is unto a purpose. Yeah. It's about establishing lineage and legacy and a great testimony. And here we have Mama Sue. That's what, no one, no, she hasn't asked anybody to call her that, but Cheon is Papa Che by hundreds of thousands probably, and, and Mama Sue now. And she carries this burden for the family mountain and beyond, and, and so we just love this. So what I would like to do is I'd like for each one of you, just give us, you're gonna have to do it like quick, but just give, because some of these people don't know the backgrounds. They don't know the stories. Give us a little background of the, just the beginning of what happened in Toronto. Give us a little background, Benny, of what happened and why in the world did Bethel, this out of the way place in Redding, California, become a place where a fire got lit, and then as well, then Sue, then you take it. And let's touch a little bit about, because your mothers, grandmothers of revival, what helped strike the match? Okay, Mary Audrey. Okay. 
Really quickly, there's a wonderful book out there called Once Upon a Revival, which is very small. You can read it in an hour, hour and a half, and it tells the story of that awesome night, January 20th, 1994. We were just as a nice little church with about 200 members, minding our own business, just no, nothing, no rocking any boats or anything. And one Thursday night, around 120 people, whoever gathers on a Thursday night, we never did. We never even gathered on a Wednesday night. About 120 people gathered to hear a, a man within the vineyard movement that we were a part of come and just share what he'd experienced uh, through uh, a revival you know, here, here in the States. And all heaven broke loose, literally. I was uh, in, we had two rooms, 197 four chairs in each room. Don't anybody tell you there were two or 300? There was 197 chairs in each of those rooms. I counted them. By summer, we were cramming 1,300 people into, into that place. But anyway, anyway, I was in the other room, two rooms, one tiny bathroom, one and a half pastors, half a secretary, who got so hit with the Holy Spirit, all she could do was speak in tongues when she answered the phone. So we had to get somebody else in to help. Listen, she answered the phone. Somebody was phoning from New Zealand to find out what was going on. She answered the phone, and as soon as she said hello, she began to speak in tongues, and the power of the Spirit went through the phone to where that pastor was sitting in his office in New Zealand, and he and his secretary got slain in the Spirit. Just for a minute. All heaven broke loose. Everything that Patricia and I had been taught and that we had taught for 20 years that God would never do. Don't you know that, it was, that's not the 11th commandment, but, but the Holy Spirit's a gentleman, you know, he'll never offend. You better wipe that one right out of your book. <laughs> because I remember John Wimber saying, he will often offend your mind to reveal what's in your heart. And that was sure revealed to me very quickly. And so that night I was in the other room teaching a class on motivational gifts. And when it was over, uh, class over, people went out into the, into the parking lot through an exit. And I slipped through the little door and across the little corridor and the other door and opened it because it was strangely quiet in the sanctuary and I didn't know what was going on. And I opened the door and a whoosh came through the door. And the power of the wind of the Spirit of God knocked me off my feet, flat on my face, and I was silent for 20 minutes. That was the miracle that happened. Look at this <laughs> And when I got on my knees and crawled over to look through the door, there was nobody in there. There was nobody on the seats. They were all on the floor under their seats. The worship team uh, had all been, been, fell off the back of the stage. They were gone. <laughs> now, this was a nice church. This was not a fanatical church. It was a proper church that did things properly. And as somebody and a leader who always did things properly and didn't like surprises and don't throw the program, you know, don't mess up my program, my programs began to be messed and have been messed for the last 20 years, and I would never go back to the old way. And the whole quick thing is the revival that broke out in Toronto was just one facet, one side of what God is doing around the world. Many of you are already in revival, and you don't know it because I don't know what you're looking for. The power of God, the Spirit of God moving amongst you and bringing love and unity and empowering, and we have to put labels on things. But what happened with us was a breaking forth of joy, a breaking down of religious walls, and a revelation of Father's heart, which is our basic premise, the Father heart of God that has carried us through, and millions of people have been to the church in Toronto. Many, many, I couldn't exaggerate, umpteen, maybe 100,000 pastors who were burned out, tired, sick and tired of being pastor, didn't even want to go to church, but they had to came and got themselves renewed, re, you know, regenerated, and, and, and then love with their Lord and with their people. I could just tell you, it's a wonderful story. It hasn't stopped. You will find at revival always, you know, comes in like a wave, and there's an ebb, and then comes in like a wave, and then there's a quiet time. And it's been like that uh, for 20 years, and I could never go back to doing church ever again. Um, we, uh, we pastor Bethel Church in Redding, California, and that church, <laughs> uh, that church sent us out, in fact, it was Bill's dad, he was pastoring, sent us to a little community mountain town an hour away for 17 years to pastor. We raised our kids there, and the year before we came back to Bethel, 
um, we went to Toronto. And um, the thing with Bill and I is that we weren't desperate and burned out. We were seriously having a good time. God was doing things, but we were hungry for more. And so we went. Bill went first time, came home, took me, came back, and it hit our women in this little mountain community. It hit our women, and it hit us big time, and it just exploded from there. Well, in the meantime, the elders from Bethel were coming to watch us and to see they were hearing, because my parents were in Bethel, and we'd send them videos of Toronto. And so they would sneak up and see what was going on, and they asked us to come. Through a process of a year, we decided to come, um, that God was saying yes to, a, to us for us to go. So we came, they interviewed us, Bill spoke, and he says, I'm all about revival. I don't care where we are. And they voted us in, uh, 90, we were in the AG at the time, they voted us in 98% come, come and bring revival. Well, you know, revival's messy. Yeah. <clears throat> and we came down to Reading. Bill spoke a message, I don't know, maybe a couple weeks into being pastor there, maybe a couple months. And we called everybody down to the front one night because they were exhausted. They had been without a pastor for 11 months and just really, really tired and needed to be refreshing. So Bill just called everybody down. And Bill and I were standing on the steps together, and people were down there, and we just did a blanket prayer. And a lady who's now one of my closest friends dropped to the stairs, and God hit her. And we knew... We looked at each other and went, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and it just swept through the church. And we left that night and I said, I hope they love us in two or three months. <laughs> and we had, over the course of, I don't know how long, I don't know, maybe a year, we had a thousand people leave. But we had people come up to us and beg us, please don't let us go back to where we were. We were seeing people that would fall on the floor and just, you know, do everything that you do in renewal, and they would come up completely healed. Yeah. They would come up and their marriages would be restored. It was just like this phenomenal happening. It was all about the Father's heart. Both Bill and I were, got so wrecked. I personally got wrecked in Toronto, just wrecked. And I was minding my own business, and a gentleman, I think it was Ian, came and touched my arm, I flew to the ground, and for 20 minutes I was completely plugged into a light socket, an electrical light socket, and I came up off of that floor with, with strongholds shattered in my life. Wow. And so we, we, we knew what that all looked like, and we knew that people were getting set free, and we would tell them, we're not going back. There is no way we're going back. Um, we're, we're carrying this, and now, you know, it's been almost 20 years that we've been there, and it's, it's fun to watch everything evolve in what it happens. And then Randy came. We had Randy Clark came, and that's when the healings just exploded, just, just exploded. And so, yeah, that's, we're doing it, and we're, having, we're still having fun. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Hey, awesome. So, Sue, tell us some of how the beginnings happened here in this territory in Pasadena with you and Che. Um, thank you for reminding us of some of the manifestations of his presence. Uh, I'm just going to yield. I'm not going to even resist it anymore. So, <laughs> so uh, for those of you, especially those of you watching or maybe seeing us for the first time, uh, this is not something I'm trying to uh, fabricate. But for me personally, even as the other day, Stacy was explaining how she shakes, that there is a connection in the spirit. And this is what's happening with me. And sometimes I, my body, my physical body can't contain all of it. The way I describe it is, is if you know how sometimes when you swallow too much water, you kind of like that. Well, that's what's going on here. So, and he's, he's laughing right now, not, not at me, but he's just pouring joy, and I feel like that's one of the things the Holy Spirit wants to release today in you is joy. So, so, uh, so Sue, go ahead, stand up, and just release it. Oh, okay? boy. Why not? It began uh, this way. Wow! So let's just have some more. Father, we thank you, Lord. 
We thank you, Lord God, that 20, now almost 21 years ago, God, the anthem of our hearts was more, Lord. And so, Father, we say more, Lord. We taste and we, we eat and drink of you, Holy Spirit. And we say, we thank you, God, that joy is the best medicine in the name of Jesus. And Father, we cancel out depression right now. We speak to the mind, soul, and body, and spirit. And what serotonin cannot do, we say, Holy Spirit, come do now. Do it in a mighty way, God. Fill, fill, more God, more God, more Lord. We ask in Jesus' name. The Lord says, don't, I, I feel there's some of you, you're saying, I'm not deserving of favor. I'm not deserving of the Father's favor. And I cancel that lie right now in the name of Jesus. You're a daughter of the Lord. No. You are favored by the Father. Receive, receive the joy of the Lord right now. Row, joy, unspeakable joy. Joy, unspeakable joy. Not just chemical balance, not just hormonal harmony. We speak Holy Spirit right now. And ask for the Holy Spirit right now. It says, if you ask, I will okay, give you the Holy Spirit. Okay, all around the room, Cry you can receive right Spirit. where you're at. Cry out to the Holy Spirit. You can Spirit. receive right where Holy you're at, Spirit. right now. Holy Spirit, we love you. This is we better than you. an interview. Release, release, release God. Come, the same Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come. The same Spirit. Holy The same Spirit. Spirit that Come. raised Christ from the Holy dead lives in you. Spirit. Holy Again. Spirit, come, whoa, 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 Phil, Phil, you are qualified. Holy Spirit, baptism of the, some of I you are going to receive Sue, tongues that there is for a the release of joy, a release of joy, a release of joy, a release of holy, holy laughter that goes deep inside of you, that transforms your life that transforms everything about you. Woo! Joy, joy. Some of you are way too serious. Woo! Some of you just need to laugh. Some of you might even have to fake it at first. Woo! Woo Laughter is good medicine. That's what the Bible says. Father, I thank you. I just release a, a, a mother's blessing over you all. The mother's blessing. I release an El Shaddai. El Shaddai. I, I release a mother's blessing over all of you, and she wants you to be fulfilled. Your mother wants you to succeed. Your mother wants you to move in everything you've been designed to do. Your mom, your mother nurtures you, and I bless you in the name of Jesus to pick up the baton and to run with it. Hey, Nancy, my buddy, oh, more for you. Uh-oh. Wow. Father, I thank you for your daughters. I thank you that you knew them before they were ever in their, their own mother's womb. I thank you, you knew them from before the beginning of this world. I thank you for the de destiny. I thank you for every single thing that has their name on it because you've written it and you've decreed it and you've declared it. And I thank you, Papa, you're not gonna leave any one of us half done. Not half done. You're gonna bring to completion what you've designed for us from the beginning, before the beginning of time. And we say yes. Yes. Let's give a let's yes. say yes to the Lord. Yes. Whatever you want. We say yes, yes Lord. Yes. Wherever we're from. Yes. We say yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Whatever sphere of life and ministry yes. we represent. Yes. We cry yes, Lord. Yes. To the family mountain, we say yes. To the education mountain, we uh -oh. say revival. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. To the government mountain, yes. we say revival. Uh -oh. To the arts and entertainment, we say more, Lord. Uh -oh. 
Lord, to the church, religious mountain, we say invade. Lord, more. Just lift your hands right now. More, more. <laughs> you can get healing right now. Just plug in. I want to stand with those of you that have been shut down by religion. Right now, I declare it's time to take your liberty. It's not time to be rebellious. It's time to be cooperative with God. It's time to be cooperative with God. It's time to say yes. He's the one that opens the doors for you. You don't have to push anything open. You don't have to push anything open. So, Father, I'm asking you to do something sovereignly, corporately within this place, that there would be broken off of every woman here that in their religious circles they've been told you can't because. I break that off of you in the authority that I have as a woman that has been, been said yes to. I break that lie off of you now in the name of Jesus. And I declare today is a new day, and it's your choice as to whether you walk in it, in Jesus' name. Um, some of you have had your spirits turned off um, by words that have been spoken over you. I, I, I'm saying this out of experience. I had my spirit shut up, um, not by my parents, but from other people saying, you're shy, you're shy, you're shy, you're shy, you're shy, all of my life and you, my spirit shut up. In my experience in Toronto is God opened my spirit again. So if you are like that, I want you to put your hand right here on the very core of you. Right here on the very core of you. And we're gonna pray for the Holy That's Spirit awesome. to come. There you go, Benny. It's awesome. Woo! It's wholeness. Right now it's happening. Holy Spirit. Oh! Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, just let him open it up and I reverse all those words that shut your spirit up. And I say that the Holy Spirit would speak over you tender words of love, tender words of encouragement. You are mighty. You are courageous. And nothing that was said about you is true. It was a lie. So receive the Holy Spirit's promise in you and may your spirits awaken. May your spirits awaken. May your spirits awaken and you become everything that the Holy Spirit wants you to be in Jesus' name. No, this is really important. This is really important. And sometimes with all the activity, we can miss in a sense. So I want you to really listen right now because she's talking about an awakening because it's an awakening, but it's an awakening. Inter we want a grand, great awakening, but we need an internal awakening to export the awakening. So just, I want you to just speak into it again, Benny. No! away from this place today and you're going to have an encounter if you haven't already you're gonna have you're gonna have an encounter with the Holy Spirit like you have never encountered before so I release you to that in the name of Jesus be open be expectant don't put him in a box you know he doesn't like that box so don't think in your mind well I want it to happen like this just say Lord yes Lord, yes. How about mothers and grandmothers of revival? And guess what? We know this because it's in the Bible. God is not a respecter of persons. And availability 
is the greatest ability. And the depth of your hunger is the length of your reach to God. So I stand with these right now. I just like, if you wouldn't mind, you guess, just like hold hands, okay? Just hold hands all across the auditorium. Where two or three have been led together in Jesus. Because this is not about manifestations. This is not a just about stuff. This is about Jesus. Jesus, 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 we praise you, we magnify you, Jesus, 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 be high and lift it up, be high and lift it up, be high and lift it up, Jesus, Jesus. Many of you are called to Mother Revival Renewals Outpourings of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives within you. I'm going to pray a blessing on you that you will give birth to flows of the Spirit and, and life to others in every place that you go. It's what you were made for. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for your greatest blessing, your richest blessing to fall upon your women right now. And the men too, if you're a man watching, this prayer is for you as well, that you would give birth to moves of the Spirit. We are about ready to, to experience the greatest move of God in all of church history. I've seen it for years. I've seen Isaiah 60 coming to pass. I've seen vision of the great harvest. It's just a matter of time before it all unfolds and God wants you to be a part of it. But in it all, we need to remember the love of God because that is the foundation and the basis for all that God is and all that he does. And remember this, that he loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. We'll see you next time and join me online at patriciaking.com. This is Kevin. Kevin's job requires him to travel over weekends, which leaves Kevin without a church community. So he logs onto XP Web Church, where he can connect with a vibrant church community anytime, anywhere. Join now at xpwebchurch.com.